Before the break, we exposed the dangers and risks of getting plastic surgery procedures abroad in unaccredited facilities. But medical tourism covers all fields of medicine. So how can you have any medical procedure done safely? And if you can, how do you go about doing that? Join us now via Skype. With a different perspective is Renee Marie Stefano, the president of the Medical Tourism Association. We also have Glenn Cohen, a professor at Harvard Law School and the author of Patients with Passports. Thank you both so much for joining on this very important Welcome. conversation. <laughs> Renee, I would like to start with you because you're a big proponent of medical tourism and you say that some of the horror stories that people hear are giving medical tourism a bad name. Explain that to us if you would. Well, I am absolutely passionate about the opportunities for medical tourism, but the challenges are that people are taking um, information off the internet and making life-threatening decisions based on what they read and not necessarily knowing what all the um, aspects they need to be considering are. So for instance, looking at hospitals' international accreditation, um, which would be able to ensure patient safety and quality standards, um, the certification of professionals in the industry, looking at the certifications and validating the credentials of the physician. You can go to the websites of the international accreditation bodies to make sure that those are legitimate accreditations, that they're still valid. And you can also see if there have been claims filed um, against those hospitals. Well, and I think one of the issues with guests we portray today is that a lot of falsehoods out there. And I think that's where things are getting confusing because I'm a physician and I can tell you hearing the stories of the people we profiled today mm -hmm. where there are these surgery coaches involved and a lot of confusion. And so I wanna ask you, Glenn, because you have a, a little bit of a different perspective. You're the author of a book called Patients with Passports. I will say it can be very difficult when it comes to things like determining accredita accreditation, and knowing exactly in different countries what that even means. Can you address that? Absolutely. So first of all, let's just understand that accreditation is not a panacea. Yes, you want to go to an accredited hospital, you want someone who's board certified, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get good results. Most of the accreditations are about processes and procedures, not about outcomes. And as a patient, the idea that you're going to be able to get and understand the outcome data, I think is really unrealistic. Moreover, even if it is a good surgeon and a good facility, there's still the risk of the travel itself, bringing back multi-drug bacteria, exposing yourselves in a compromised immune state, airplane travel. And then there's questions about the continuity of care. Will your home country physician be willing to treat you afterwards? And last but certainly not least, if something does go wrong, like the patient you talk to has $200,000 in debt, there's the question about what happens then. Can you sue for malpractice? And the reality is if you go abroad for medical tourism, it's much, much more difficult to recover than in the United States. And you're saying, Glenn, that there's actually no recourse. You can't sue if you're getting treatment somewhere else and something goes wrong out of the United States. You can certainly try, but it's gonna be hard. Now, Glenn, what you touched on is so important that the surgery goes on for one hour, two hours, four hours, mm -hmm. but the process that happens after that the recovery and the post-operative care is as important, if not more important, than the surgery itself. So you have to make sure that all of those ducks are lined up, things come up. If your physician, if the facility is not readily available, that's a problem. 